How are we doing, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Getting Jiggy with it. I'm Will, and today we're opening one of our newest Kickstarter games that we received, which is Brick and Mortar. Uh, this is by Octorap Games. It's two to four players, 60 to 120 minutes, 14 plus. I, got, I didn't have any of that memorized. Why would I ever have it? I could have looked here, though, but I still wouldn't have been looking at the camera. You still would have known I'd have been reading. Anyways, let's go ahead and flip over to the other camera. Let's go. I don't know why, sometimes I have to hit it twice. Uh, but this is Brick and Mortar. This is actually kind of a hefty game. I, I just realized that now, trying to flip this back down and probably hit the microphone, you probably heard it. But this is kind of a hefty game. Uh, but a game by Nicholas J. McCollum, artwork by Tristan Rosen. So of course, this is one of the first games that we backed one Kickstarter. Um, and I've kind of mentioned about how like, you know, certain people are trying to say, oh, we can't get the games to people in time. Oh, there's this and that. There's all these things that are happening that are causing issues. And I'm getting Kickstarter games in that I backed this year. So I digress. That's just, you know, something for, uh, I guess, food for thought. Uh, but this is one of the first games we backed. I backed it for two reasons. One, the artwork is beautiful. And you'll see when we go through it and again, artwork is the first thing that's going to draw me into a campaign, let alone a game, right? If the game just looks bland, I, I hate to say I don't care how good the game is, because I might give it a chance, but I'm not gonna, I'm not going to do anything with it. The second reason is this has to do with building a brick and mortar store. If you've watched some of our videos, you guys know what my background is and probably what I'm currently doing. So for those of you that don't, I guess I should tell you. Uh, I'm, my background was retail. I did retail for many a years, basically from the age of 18 all the way up until my 30s. Um, and then at one point in time, I just realized retail isn't for me. It never really was. But I also got a degree in marketing management. So that's the other reason we got this game is because um, I have a background in it. And I thought it would be fun to use my degree for something. <laughs> Even though I'm not using it for my day job. Hey, I'll use it for board games. With that said, guys, let me stop rambling. Let me show you guys the back of the box because how you guys get an overview of what we're going to see. And then we'll go ahead and get inside. Like I said, this, this is a hefty boy. He's got a little bit of weight to him. Uh, let's put this here on the side. That way it is in screen. So, nice little instruction, how to assemble our dials. Uh, we got our brick and mortar manual here. All right, now the first thing you'll notice is I slid that away, I'm gonna bring it back. There is no insert, uh, but there's a lot of components, so it's it's very well done. I don't care about inserts sometimes, as long as everything fits, I can bag it, tag it, call it a day. Uh, so introduction, uh, game components is nice. They show you exactly what these components are. That's always nice, because that way you don't, oh, move the phase token, well, what's the phase token? Move the point token, but what's the point? Like, it, it shows you, that's nice. Uh, store cards, starting stores, marketplace, um, and then you have your uh, colors. So these are your crates, your, your products that you're making. Uh, in unlimited resources, all right, so you learn that. Uh, setup, so my setup here, show you exactly how to put everything on the board, try to get rid of that glare for you guys. It's completely flat, there's no glare, uh, except for up here in this corner. I noticed that in the last unboxing. Uh, play summary, so that's nice, a nice little quick synopsis of what you're going to be doing with each phase. Uh, store cards, overview of how they work. Uh, modifiers, how they work. Uh, more modifiers um, for the first round, building phase. I I'm trying to look under my phone. I forgot I switched the phone around where I could look on the top. Because the last unboxing I did, there was a bar here and I couldn't see it. I switched it. I fixed it. Uh, managing your building, closing stores. Um, so there's a lot here. Um, so definitely, if you'd like to know how this plays, probably definitely want to come out and watch our live play. Um, I don't know how many how to play videos there are out there or even how many gameplay videos of this there are out there. Um, we may start to do the how to play videos. Both of us have, me and Audrey both have facilitation in a background, but it's just not something we do, right? Um, she's a teacher. But for some reason, teaching board games has still been a little bit of a crux for us, right? We can't, can't quite do it. Our uh, exporter, so Jaden and Maria are playing. Ah, Jaden, that's my niece name. Shout out to JJ. Uh, inventory phase, so get to each of your phases. End game, scoring, so final scoring. It's basically who's gonna have the most money, I'd imagine. Final scoring, taking value of your point tokens, add any points from your stores, subtract the indicated points for each entry in your player board, subtract the points from your debit, from your debt, not debit, debit. I did it again, debt. <laughs> uh, and then uh, turn order, and then in case of a tie, the player the further ahead and turn order wins. All right. uh, debt tokens, before and after modifications. On your first game, okay, that's nice. All right, so 
you notice we went through that. That was just to get to end game was 18 pages plus the setup. But here you go. Before your first game, it gives you a nice thing to make it easier to get into. And that's really nice. You have preset hands. Don't do random store market cards. Instead, the preset hands are used. And then there's some strategy tips so you know how to play your first time. That's, I like that. That's really nice. And that's something I think that keeps a lot of people out of hobby games is Euro games are very, I guess the word that we use is crunchy, right? There's a lot of stuff that you can do, a lot of thinking that you can do. Uh, store reference, that's nice. Tells you what all the, all the stores do. Um, I don't know if there's another reference card. I really would like another reference card just because this is in the book. So one person can have it to tell other people, but the players themselves won't have it. Uh, and then you have icon, a phase icon, so what everything does is here, and then it will also click on. Not bad. All right, so you get these screens, because I think some of the stuff is supposed to be kept a secret. Let's see what's on the back of these screens. So these are nice, again, beautiful art. Uh, it is wrap around. Uh, I think they're all the same, yeah. So they're all the same. I know the player boards are different. I didn't know if these would be different. These are all the same. So there you go, so storage, clothing companies, and there's all your stores. On the back, I guess they're different on the back because you have your different, yeah, your different player colors. Okay, so they're for your different player colors. So here are the item prices. That's nice. Uh, game phases. That's nice. Uh, supply cards face up. Add these to the market. Demand cards face down. Sell these to the market. Um, buy points. Sell points. So it kind of tells you your buy, buying and selling. All right. What else we got? We got some freebie bags. These might be needed for something. I don't know what. Uh, we have bigger freebie bag. We like freebie bags, but sometimes we get freebie bags and we don't even have to use them for anything. So it's, sometimes it's kind of confusing why we get them. So these are screen pin, screen printed. It is a screen printed. I don't know what screen printed is. Screen printed. Um, I don't remember what was Kickstarter exclusive, so I apologize. I can't really tell you guys that. Um, but these are nice. Look at these. These are these are beautiful. Nice colors. Uh, so you got white, black, purple, aqua, orange, and yellow. So we're good. How did it get purple? I get orange. Um, we both like purple, but orange, of course, because of the Orioles, is my backup color. All right, and then these are the goods cubes. They're just cubes. They're just cubes. Uh, we will probably separate these out further into small bags because we usually want each color to be separate. It just makes it easier when you're playing, not having to dig through to get the color you want. There you go. Beautiful colors, nice, nice cubes. Cubes are cubes. That's what cubes do. All right. Uh, we'll get the player boards. I think that's right next. Uh, those are pieces. That's just pieces for the uh, spinner things or for the wheels. So the player boards, each player um, gets a, a unique board. The powers, however, are all the same. So it's just I think it's just for so we get a little bit more of a diverse look. Um, so we get this one here, which I just pushed off the screen so you guys didn't get to see. So I'm move things around without hitting the number pad because then that would turn things off. This here, so this one here has got like this perfume, I guess. And got this one here, and it's got a car salesman thing. So it's over, it's actually in a different spot. Uh, but the abilities are the same. So you can see 0, zero 1, 1. Uh, this one here is the ability. Uh, you may discount one or all of your market cards. Uh, and then this one here is another build. It says you can play an extra market card and then three clues. So that's all the same, which I was pointing to and was completely covered up. Uh, and this one here is, uh, do they have a player color to them? Okay, I was thinking this was red, so maybe it was a red color. Um, down there, so it's got some kind of little thing going on there. And then this is the last one. Uh, and it's a wine, I guess a wine stick. So that's kind of neat. It is nice that they're different. They didn't have to make them different, but they did. Uh, the back is just a textured thing, I guess. Like normal, normal back of a board game texture. All right. Um, just we have to, oh, another board, another board in there. Let's get the other board out. So this is the uh, play board. Oh, this opens up. There we go. So this is the play board. It's going to take a little while to sit flat. Uh, but you have your score track, 
uh, your phases. So you move the mark down to each of the phases. Uh, the calendar, which is the game rounds. Cards that are in demand. Your buying points. Your turn order, which your little shopping cart goes there. Um, sell points. And then here is the min max value for each of the goods. And I guess you put the goods here. I don't know. I've got to read the rules. Don't know how. That, don't know how that works. All right. We got these stores. Store cards. All right. Now I know there were some Kickstarter stores. I'm, I'm wondering again if they were just unlocked and everybody gets them. Um, again, I apologize. It's been a while. I didn't. I should have reviewed the Kickstarter page again before I started unboxing, but I didn't. All right, so, okay, so here, here are your player aids. So you have the distribution of how many of each item there is, the pricing, the buy points, um, and the back side is scoring, I guess? I, I keep, I'm flipping them all over. Oh, uh, no, it's some kind of algorithm thing. Uh, I guess it's for people that don't know how to multiply. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is... Yeah, it's a multiplication chart. Huh. I mean, I guess it's nice. That way, if you want to play with kids, you know, it's got a multiplication chart for you. Me, I, I, I'm, I actually were playing Merchant's Cove, and that was one of the, the... I don't want to say it was a fun aspect, but one of the fun things for me was that I was having to do some more math in my head. And you don't you do not do enough math in your daily... day-to-day -day life, right? Depending on your job. Sorry. Job my name. Uh, so it was nice to actually try to use my brain for mapping. Um, so there we go. So here is Andrew's Deli. He gets two goods. Cost of two. He gets two people. Plus. Uh, maybe some of the cards can only be played at a certain map. That's Iran's Market. Kimberly's Market. Kristen's Fashions. Mio's Corner Store. All right. So those... Okay, so that was a double. So those were those ones started getting into clothes and goods. I wasn't even paying attention to what they were. Got a five. I don't know what that means. Oh, sell points. Three dollars times the number of sell points. Okay, so if you sell the business, you get that times that, I think. Again, haven't read the rules. Um, it's been a while, again, since I watched or seen anything of the Kickstarter, so. Uh, six, one, advertising agency. Yep, set aside any number of your market cards face down. And draw replacements. When you close this, discard remaining, set aside market cards. You may choose one card on here and play it. I may choose one card on here and play it. All right, so you get to play a card there. So you're kind of like saving cards. Uh, and then, yeah, so a lot of them have these little abilities. You have jewelry and art. Art liquidator. Art peddler. Art purveyor. Art studio. <laughs> I like the first ones. The first ones had people's names. Oh, I think these were, I think these were backers. I think it was like if you pledged at a certain level, you got your name on a card. I think that's what those were. Or they won a contest or something. A bank. Yeah, because these all just are normal. But again, the art's really nice. I mean, that's beautifully well done. Colors are very vibrant. Everything was really good. Clothing. Clothing. Oh, so this is all clothing. Computers. Consignment, so they have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, designer boutique. Designer knockoffs. So let's see what the difference is. Uh, so you can only, in the boutique, you can only have three, 12, two. And the knockoff, you get, it's cheaper, eight, two, but you can have five. Um, and then it's four versus three. Players must bid for a clothing of at least one point sales. Um, at least one clothing plus three dollars per clothing, otherwise minus two. Okay. So if at least one person sells, you get three dollars. Otherwise, you lose money. Oh, okay. Designer outfit. Duty free store. So we got electronics. We'll just kind of start going through these a little bit quicker since we're not going to the abilities. If you guys want to see it, of course, you can pause to kind of read the cards. States. And that's a different levels there. More factory. Farmer's market, a flea market. Uh, so we got food, so there's going to be all the food stuff. And it's nice that they're color-coded, too. 
So you can tell the ones that are specific because they got this nice color coding in it. Fulfillment. I may sell. Okay, so these are the sell. These are the fulfillment centers where you can sell goods um, and make money. Three. Yeah, so these are your fulfillment centers. And furnishings. Jewelry. The jewels. Knock off electronic. <laughs> Who wants a knockoff electronic? Like the knockoff clothing I get, like a knockoff, like, well, actually, is a knockoff electronic just like a no name electronic brand that you get on Amazon now, right? You can go and buy the real, the real name one, but then there's three more that look just like it because they're all made in the same factory. Uh, luxury gifts, the mall, the museum, natural groceries. We got more groceries, pawn shop. A small loading dock minus two minus two per each of those when you stock at least two of three of your same type in your stores small textile oh supermarket only has one shelf mm, that's not good thrift store another warehouse we can see all right so those are the stores uh, nice nice card stock there's nothing oh these are different okay these have Blue bags. Why do these have blue bags? Huh. Okay, so all the ones with people's names actually have a different colored bag. I'm not sure what are different about these. Let's see if it says in the rules. Oh, six starting. Okay, these are your starting stores. Okay, these are the starting stores. But again, I don't remember if the names were. Um, backer names or not. I can't remember. I remember something about getting it, your name on a store, but I don't, for like me, I don't know the full details, so I apologize for that. All right, and then this is, I don't know what it is, it's tiny, tiny cards. Yeah. All right. The tiny, okay, so there's tiny market cards. These are, okay, so this is, I think, what the market wants. Uh, these are all the same. Okay, so they're all the same. They just dairy. Food, two electronics, three food, one jewelry. Yeah, so I think these are just the market. These are what you're going to sell to the market. And it's, I think, it, if I remember correctly, it's like first come, first serve. So based on turn order, you start filling it up. The more people I think that sell, the less the value is because, of course, price competition. Um, if you're the only one, then I think you get more money. So you have to try to base your decisions around that. And this is... This is staticky, that's what this is. This is just the money. This is just the money. So you get dollars. I do have something in the back. They're all the same. Okay, so they're all the same on the back because I think this is one of those hidden uh, hidden games where you, you don't show how much money you have. So the ones, that's your fives with the queen on it. And that is the tens with Abraham Lincoln, but he doesn't have his hat. Uh, and that is the twenties, which has, I guess, Benjamin Franklin. Or, or somebody that looks like Benjamin Franklin. And the ones are, I don't know who she is. I don't know, since this one has the queen, I wonder if the ones... Yeah, see, that's got the queen. I wonder if this is somebody, a, a British individual. Not sure. If you guys know who that lady is or who that lady is supposed to be, uh, let me know. And then the last thing are the... Uh, whoop. Well, that punched out pretty easy. So right there, right off the bat, and they, they punch out pretty easy. So these are... Okay, so you have $2. Uh, $10 are coins. Um, so those are definitely not secrets, although, wow, that popped out nice and easy. Yeah, those are popping out nice and easy. Um, so I don't know, because these have negatives on the back, so I don't know why these are negative three. And five goods. I, mean, I don't know what these do, but yeah, they all, they all pop out pretty nice, and there's a little bit of hang on that one. Yeah, these are popping out. I need to stop doing that. Now I'm going to have a big mess. This is not unlike any of my other unboxings. Everything just becomes a big mess. 
Um, but yeah, this is your supply and demand. So you have quantity, uh, quantity, price, uh, and then you set a number of how much you want to buy and how much you want to sell. So I think it's supply and demand. All right, there we go, guys. That is it. Uh, let me flip back over here. Maybe there we go. All right. There we go. That is uh, Brick and Mortar. I'm bringing this right in front of us again. Uh, by uh, Octoraph Games. It's actually a, a, an octopus giraffe. Octoraph. Octoraph Games. Uh, if you want to get a copy of this game, uh, I guess go out to the website or go out to the Kickstarter. Uh, I'll have a link down below wherever you'll be able to buy this one. I don't think it's on Amazon or anything yet because, of course, this is a new game that just came out to Kickstarter. If you'd like to see the gameplay, how it plays, and whatnot, Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell notification. That way you guys can watch us when we go live uh, and play this. Probably next year uh, is when we're going to be able to play this. Uh, we have a lot of plans for next year, including our membership, having special videos for you guys, as well as more uh, videos about, like, I don't want to say rating, so we're not going to rate, but basically our first impressions or first opinions of a game when we play it, because most of the time it is the first time we've played it and it would be bad to give a review. Again, if you want to see that content, hit that subscribe button. That way you can get notified when those videos get uploaded. Until next time, guys. Peace.